upon us, O God. Rain upon us. Soak us for the latter rain. It is time for your weekly television presentation of the Strings of Power Ministries here in St. Vincent and the Grenadines. Direction through anointed singing. Praise the Lord! This is my story! Is this your story? Hallelujah! Real life testimonies. I feel it is real. God is good. I know I have prayed and what I prayed for. God really granted unto me. And powerful messages from the pulpit. I beg you in Jesus' name, stop doing what you know is wrong. Get out of that. God has an abundant supply for you. We need a revival in Parliament. We need a revival in Cabinet. We need a revival in the country. As the waters cover the sea. It's not so much more little churches we need to spring up. But we need men and women of God to rise up. With the anointing of God. Not seeking their own five and six members. But oh God that will come together and say Lord revive us. Revive us. Revive us. Fill each heart with your love. May every soul be rekindled with fire from above. Direction seeks to point men and women, boys and girls everywhere, to God the Father through Jesus Christ, His Son. We believe with you today that God will move quickly to come to your rescue and fix that business that you have put before Him. May the favor of God locate you wherever you are in Jesus' name. Stay with us for the next hour to be blessed and encouraged. Thy loving kindness is better than life. Thy loving kindness is better than life. My lips shall praise thee, thus will I bless thee. I will lift up my hand unto your name. Thy loving kindness is better than life. Thy loving kindness is better than life. My lips shall praise thee, thus will I bless thee. I will lift up my hands unto your name. I lift my hands. I lift my hands, Lord, unto your name. 
Christ die for me. Long my imprisoned spirit laid, fast bound in sin and nature's night. Thine I deep dews of wakening ray, I woke the dawn. God for that amazing love. Hallelujah. I'm not preaching. <laughs> I just want to share a little. That's okay. The amazing love. This is I'm, I'm, a few points here. If First Samuel 17, 33 to 55. You know the story of, of David and Goliath. We are all familiar with that. Number one, David accepted the challenge to face that giant. In verse 32, David said to Saul, let no man's heart fail because of him. He was uncircumcised. He was a Philistine. And David said, don't let no man's heart fail because of this giant. You may have giants in your life. Okay? Don't let your heart fail. David accepted the challenge. When the big army men, strong army men, they were afraid. But David accepted the challenge. Number two, David took confidence in what he had already accomplished with God. Okay, and we see that in verse 33 to 36. Saul said to David, you are only a youth. You're only youth. In other words, you're just a little boy. How could you go and fight this nine-foot giant? You know, but David said, I slew a lion and a bear. And this uncircumcised Philistine, Philistine shall be as one of them. Okay. Number three, David had faith in the ability of God. Verse 37. Let's go on to four. Number four, David armed himself for battle. And we see that in verse 40. And you know what he armed himself with? The slingshot and his pouch, his slingshot. And imagine he, he's going up to the giant. And you know, you, you know the story, the giant laughed at him. You think I's a dog? You bring this, <laughs> send this little boy with a, in other words, I don't know if you have it, if you used to use it, a gutter perk. We used to use that in Barbados when we were little boys to, um, it's something like a white, and then we have the oh, we, rubber. We call it slingshot. You call it slingshot, but we call it a gutter perk. We, right. okay. And you knock the birds down, the yeah. poor innocent birds. Yeah. Right, so imagine. He's coming up here with a got a or uh, you call it a slingshot. You know, he think I'm a, a dog that the sent this little boy. Uh, you, you, you know how he paraded. Number five, David withstood threats from the Philistine. You'll find that in verse 43 and 44. Number six, David spoke faith in the midst of adversity. 
verse 45. In number seven, David prophesied to his giant. He prophesied to the giant. And what did he say? He said, this day, he didn't say tomorrow. He didn't say next week. But this was prophecy. He said, this day. Okay, David, he, you see, he was fed up with this giant coming every day. Fed up. And we have to get fed up. We got to be fed up with our giants. You know what your giants are. I don't know your giants. The giants that are in your life, you got to get fed up with those giants. And he said, this day, not tomorrow. Okay, what he's going to do? What he's going to do? Help me here. What he's going to do? The Lord is going to deliver. I am going to, your, your body, your carcass to the fowls of the air, to the wild beasts of the field. And the giant could not understand that. He laughed. But David went in the name of the Lord. You see, we can't go in Pastor Daniel's name. We can't go in Pastor Simon's name. You can't go in James' name. You will, the devil will laugh at you. But when we go in the name of the Lord, Hallelujah. no devil in hell nor demon can stand. So David went in the name of the Lord. Okay. He put his little stone in. When he released it, God directed it. Right down. David was not satisfied. You know what David did? He ran up to the giant, stepped on him, took his own sword, his own sword. Tuck, cut his head off. Yes. You see, we have to, when we slay our giants, we have to cut the heads off. Right. They, can't come, yeah, they can't come back. No. We have to cut the heads off. This morning, you know what your giants are. Okay? Yes. It may be sickness. And you name them. But in the name of Jesus, slay them. And cut the heads off. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. I'm going to ask the choir to come at this time. And then uh, Michael is going to share his testimony.
sisters. I'm not here to preach. <laughs> um, I was asked to um, encourage the men. Could all the men stand for me, please? Men of the sanctuary, stand for me, please. All the men. Big men, men. Young and old, young and old, still men. Okay, um, this morning, um, God lays on my heart um, this morning, um, Matthew chapter 16, verses 13. Excuse me, mm -hmm. I'll help you. Okay. Use that one, okay. if you prefer. Go ahead. It's working good, just speak. Yeah. To take. When Jesus came into the course of Caesarea Philippi, he asked the disciples, saying, Who? Do men say that I, that the Son of Man, am? Let me um, drop down to verse 17, 16. And, and Simon Peter answered, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. There is a twofold. Oh, gentlemen, you can sit, please. You can sit, you can sit. For us men, you know we hear um, the names, some of the names that people call us. Who, and Jesus asked 2,000 years ago, who do men say that we are? And I know that um, some of the names that they give us uh, don't be too sweet. Now, I don't know about here, but in Barbados, when uh, men are being bashed, some of the names they give us is really outrageous. And I guess because men tend to build their own reputations. But here in um, verse 16, God revealed unto Peter who Jesus was. I'm here to encourage all men, despite what it said what men might say about us, what mankind might say about us, and who we are, what we are. It does not matter. It is what God says we are. Amen. You see, he, uh, Jesus said that flesh and blood did not reveal that unto Peter. It was God, his Father in heaven. So I would like to encourage all men, despite what they are said and people say about you, young and old, it does not matter. What matters is what God says about you. Thank you. Somebody in here, God has been good to you. You should be able to look at your neighbor and say, God's been good. Somebody ought to have a testimony. Can I get a witness? If God's been good to you, you shouldn't mind testifying how he brought you through. He said he had an attack. He came over by me. And now I know 
he could not go back home in that state. Mm -hmm. I had to get prayer for him. Mm -hmm. And it was the only place that was I could have bring him to. Yeah, and I brought him here and you prayed for him. But after that, it was worst, mm -hmm. you know, yes. So. But thank God, look at him now. Stand on the next side. I'm going to hold it for you. Tell me what happened to you, if you remember. Well, um, mostly. You have a good bass voice. <laughs> Um, it was something like a, more like a demonic attack. I wasn't really... I know it was. I wasn't really prepared for it. You know, um, I just want to thank God for helping me through everything. And for those of you who prayed for me, I want to thank you all too. You know, you actually refused the prayer the first time. And when we start to rebuke what we saw in you, that should not have been in you, you actually walked out of the church. You know that, but you had to come back. Hmm? Yeah, I had to. This is the house of God, so I have no other choice. And you're a young man. There's no need for the adversary to control your life. No need. What do you feel like today? Well, I feel strong. I do a lot of reading, a lot of praying, you know, so I strengthen the spirit. It's like the scripture in the book of Mark. When he came, he could not sit down. But now he's sitting and he's clothed in his right mind. He didn't come as a member of this church, neither is he a member, baptized member of this church. Good morning, church. Well, I was one of those who were drinkers. <laughs> I was under a curse. <laughs> I was under a curse. I was one of those rum drinkers that would have drank plenty, and I was far away from the Lord. But one day I made a decision to go to church. And it was a Saturday evening, and me and the fellows was drinking. So I said to them, I'm going to church tomorrow. And the first they said, your wife giving trouble? <laughs> uh, so my reply was, if she's giving trouble, then I'm going to the right place. So I decided and told my friends I'm going to church, so they couldn't believe that I'm going. The Sunday morning I got up, my wife got up and she got ready for church. I got up and bathed and went in dress. She asked me, where are you going? I said, going to church. She said, you for real? I said, yes, I'm going to church. Because this year all started by, I wasn't a Christian, but I would normally get up on mornings and watch TBN. And for some reason, I don't know why, Rod Parsley will always say to me, that's how I put it, as he was saying to me, you know the Lord have a purpose for you. I said, what the Lord have a purpose for me? I was just a rum drinker. And because I could not really read and write, to me that sounded like foolish. But anyhow, I got up and I went to church on that Sunday. That was 16 years ago. And my friends told me, mm, we don't mind you. You're going to last no more than three months. But within that period of time, it took me, the Lord kept me three years away from them before I ever went back to any one of them and ministered. And today I can say that God is faithful. Yes. And he that has begun a good work in me. Is there, but
you, you, you gave a very proper and wise answer. When you, if and when you get trouble, the best place to go is where? To church. Why is that so? Because when you go to church and you find Christ, there's a eunice about life. There's purpose for life. You does not live life anymore, but there's purpose in life. And you become then, instead of that grumpy and disobedient person, you become a person of light. You then become a challenge to them that are in darkness mm -hmm. to follow this path. Mm -hmm. And this path leads us down the road to righteousness. Mm -hmm. It leads us to kindness, yes. to gentleness. Mm -hmm. It, it leads us to a place of giving where you give yourself. Amen. And still you always looking to receive. You have out a hand of compassion. Mm -hmm. You are there to help those that are weak. Mm -hmm. And you give strength to those. Sometimes they deny it. But you know within the self their conscience, it deals with them, and eventually they comes around. Yes. And they start then to respect you because of the way you walk. Then you start to walk in the integrity that God has called you to. Yes. Then persons, all they say, they have to respect you. They could bash you, they could beat you down, but they can't keep you down because Woo! God is in the midst of it. So to God be the glory. Amen. But did I hear you say that because you could not read well or write well? No matter of fact, I could not read, period. You mean I really read? I could not read. Mm. So, coming to the Lord is like to take out the Bible, to start this thing, it seems so hard. But one day I said, Pastor, I can't read, you know, so I don't know how. I can make it and how I can take up this mantle and tell people about Jesus. He said, Don't worry. Start with the four Gospels. Start with John. And the Lord will lead. And I could say today that I can take up the Bible. If I can't read nothing else, for sure I can read the Bible. <laughs> and it doesn't matter if I can read anything else, because all the other things is but foolishness. <laughs> But the word of God is life, and it's life eternal, and it, it gives strength. It, it brings you from that low place, and it sets you in a place that is high. And you are strong. You are able to face the ties of life, because the ties will come. There's times when the ties come, and they come hard. They beat upon your heart. But I want to know that there's an arm that is on the girding, and it is there to help you and to guide you through. So this God that we serve, he's a faithful God, and he's strong, and his promises are yea and yea men. His word. I wanted to pray for men today. Some of them are in the same condition, and they're embarrassed. They figure they wouldn't amount to anything more than going to the nightclubs. Some of them not even nightclubs, but street bars and so on. And the people will call them names. But look what God has done for you. Amen. Pray for men. Somebody might be listening now. Now we're reaching not only people in this building. Okay. Somebody's saying, well, if God did that for him. Hallelujah. Father, in the name of Jesus. I give you praise, oh God. I give you glory. Yes. And I give you honor. Yes, Lord. I thank you, Lord, for this opportunity, Lord, that I could stand in your presence and yes. declare that you are faithful, Lord. Yes. Lord, I bring men before you this morning, Lord God. Lord, I speak into the airways even now, oh Father God. Lord, I come against low esteem. I bind that spirit right now in the name of Jesus. Lord, I set every man free right now and at liberty, O oh God, to hear your word and to receive your word, Father God. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, I pray, O oh God, that hearts before you will be soft again, Lord. Lord, I pray, O oh God, that men will learn to fear you again, O oh God. Lord, that when your word go forth, Lord, that it will go forth with conviction, Lord. That the lives of men will be changed, O oh Father God. Lord, I pray for deliverance for men even now, O oh Father God. Lord, I come against every stronghold, O oh God, of the enemy, O oh God, that he has put upon men, Lord. 
Lord, I break every stronghold right now, every stronghold of addiction, oh God, I break it right now in the name of Jesus. Lord, I set men free and at liberty even now, oh God, to receive you, oh Father God. That they may know the love of you, oh Father God. Lord, that they may know the keeping power of you, oh Father God. So Lord, I commit all men into you, Father Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus. And I give you all the praise and all the glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Direction will continue in just a moment. Hello, my name is Agape Daniel and I have these two lovely verses to encourage you with. 1 Timothy 4 and 12 says, Let no man despise thy youth, but be thou an example of the believers. In word, in conversation, in spirit, in faith, and in puberty. My next verse will be taken from Ecclesiastes 12 and verse 1. Remember now thy creator in the days of thy youth, while the evil days come not, nor the years to night, and thou shalt say, I have no pleasure in them. So that's all the verses I have for you on direction. And my name is Agape Dahlia, and thank you, and I'll see you next time on direction. Bye. It's not about me. No secret, my friend. Give us the card, Fritz. Come, you next. Give us the, give us the, the, what, the key. It is no secret what God can do. Come on, raise it. What is done for us? You will never see it. Hamblem, who was very well known in the entertainment field, attended one of Billy Graham's crusades. And when the altar call was given, he resisted it. But I'm told when he went home, he could not live with himself. So he, in those days, he could have allowed it. He asked to see Mr. Graham at the hotel where he was staying. And there, one-on-one, -on -one, Mr. Graham, Billy Graham, it's unlike some of the preachers these days. Some of them would even shake your hand. Some of them would even say, hello, how are you today? But Billy Graham allowed him, not even knowing who he was, but allowed him to have a talk with him. And there, Billy Graham led Stuart Hamblem to the Lord. And Stuart Hamblem wrote the song, the chimes of time bring out the news. Another day is through. Someone slipped and fell. Was that someone? You. You may long for added strength. Courage, your strength, thank you, your strength to renew. It is no secret what God can do. 
Your story, I believe, is different. I don't know. You tell it. Okay. okay. Morning. Morning again. Uh, this testimony is not exactly about me, but it is one that affected me years ago. And now coming here and hearing about the little boy, 15 years old, that died and was buried yesterday, it brought back a whole flood of memories to me about things that happened before. And it's not my son, it's um, this family that we all were together. And they had a son who was 16 years old. His name was Michael. And this youngster was in his house. And they had a crusade up on the pastor above his house. So you can hear the words, you can hear the crusade coming down. And he just got up his house one day, went to the crusade, and in that same night gave his life to the Lord at 16 years old. I remember walking, because he was an athlete, I remember walking with him some days going home. We will talk about he being an athlete and he would represent this country and the things that he will do and that kind of stuff. Little did I know that that was not to be, you know. His, he continued to go to the crusade every night for six nights. And he would come home every night. And he would always tell his cousin in the house, because there was his, his, a whole set of family. He would tell his cousin that he was sleeping in the bed with. He would say, you got to get saved. you got to get saved. And to, so much so that the cousin just, at one point, just refused to sleep in the bed with this boy. But, you know, and little did we know that within a matter of days that this little boy, was, this youngster, was going to be taken away from us. And, you know, it, it, it how should I say, this stuck with me because I had just given my life to the Lord. And I didn't understand a lot about, you know, they say that the, you're supposed to bury your children. And when you, when you have, when you, sorry, your children are supposed to bury you. And when you bury your children, it is a funny experience, right? And so I can empathize with the families that are here who had to go and bury a friend and family. It is, I ask Lord, we all ask the Lord for answer of why this youngster had to die. Why is all these old people about the place? No, no offense to old people, but all these old people about the place. And here's the youngster with a whole bunch of life in front of him. Right? The thing about it is that he had a pre-existing condition. He had a hole in his heart. But when we look on years later, we say, okay, he had a hole in his heart. And that night he went up to give his life to the Lord. On the first night when he got out of his house, the Lord filled that hole in his heart. And then the Lord called him. So we never know. You know, God is doing something wonderful. I mean, God is calling youngsters sometimes. As he said, as Pastor said, there's no time when you shall go. It's just a step between here and death. So it stuck with me. And so when y'all talked about, when he spoke about the kid, it brought back all these memories. You know, and I've really kept his situation in my heart, that God could call you. Because you don't know when God calling you, how long you got after you've answered the call. Or when you, God calls you and you don't answer the call, how long you got to hear another message. It may be the last message like today. So youngsters who think that you got to all 80 and 60, you may have got only tomorrow. In the streets, you could get knocked down, you could fall off a side, somebody could get struck in the head by an accident. It's funny. And even the older ones who um, think that, okay, I've reached my time, and I could give my God, and I could sit down and warm a bench to God, call me, no, there's work to be done still. All right? There's still work to be done. So I just want to give, I don't have the answer to why God called. And you may search yourself to why God called this youngster. But there's no answer. God will not answer you. It is his will that he did what he did. There's no saying, you have to go next. It's God's will who has to go and how he will call you. Thank you. Amen. Amen. This service has taken a different turn. And we would ask her to make 
a decision for Christ, an intelligent decision. Really, according to the scripture, it's only fools that make a mock of sin, according to the scripture. We heard about, and we did it, I think it was early this year, of the ten virgins, five of them were foolish. When I preached that message in Barbados, one of the pastors then, who is not now there, he didn't want me to use the word foolish. I said, some were wise. And you know what he said? Others were otherwise. He didn't want me to say the word foolish. He was sitting next to me. He's not there anymore. You know who I'm talking about. He's gone now. But I said, five of them were wise. And I was going to say, five were say, otherwise. Don't say foolish. Just say otherwise. Boy, we like nice words these days. Hmm? But it's still there. Not the otherwise said that there's no God. The fools say in their heart there's no God. And that is what the problem is in their heart. They believe in their heart, the fools that there is no God. And as, I, we, as we converse today, I don't call this preaching, but as we converse, Jesus said about this man that he amassed so much. And um, in today's way of expressing ourselves, we will say he was set for life. You have heard it? Win such and such, and you'd be set for life. That is how the world would see it. You're set for life if you could just get the jackpot. Be set for life. But this man had more than what the local jackpot might be putting up. And as he amassed those things, he spoke to himself. He said, I have a lot of goods laid up for many years. I don't have any need to worry. My bands are bigger than they were before. But that very night, like Brother James said, this day, something is going to happen. That very night, he heard a voice clearly. And I believe that the message of the gospel should not be compromised. We must say it loud and clear to everyone. God loves the world. We heard it before. But he gave his only begotten son. Not to save some of the inhabitants of the world. But the whole world. Whosoever believeth in him should not perish. But have everlasting life. So what did that Man who thought he had it set for life. What, what did he hear? No fool. This night, thy soul is required of you. And who is going to enjoy your inheritance? Who is going to inherit the things that you amass? Think about it. Jesus usually put us to think. Just think about it. Some funerals are very happy ones where loved ones are sent off, but others are um, lots of bad and quarrelsome spirits are in them because some don't think about the loved ones, what they're laying to rest, but they think about what is left behind, how it's going to be shared. Sometimes brothers and sisters and sisters and sisters, brothers and brothers, never talk again. Not pleasantly. A 
I see in the scripture, and I believe with all my heart, that we ought to so live today that if tomorrow we're not alive any longer, that is physically, we're going to be with the Lord. Sure, we have to leave everyone and everything behind. And in a few minutes, I'll bring the service to a close with the help of the Holy Spirit. But in a droval way, Pastor Joseph said yesterday that death, fictitious, eh? death visited a lady. And she did not know it was death. And she treated death so well. You know, death could be here in disguise today. You might be feeling a little pain. Pastor, you're scaring us. That's not my intention. You might have had a dream. Death might be here in disguise today. But it does not frighten the child of God. I give my life to the Lord so I would live for him as long as I live and when I die is gain. So, story continues. After she treat him, treated him so well, Death decided that he will go for a little walk and come back. Maybe considering how well the lady treated him. And she... And please, if you visit anybody, please leave their paperwork alone here. Don't search for people's business. That's not your business. You know, I usually say some things. If you go in somebody's office, even they step out a little while, it is not your business to pull out the jaw to see what is there. You might be pulling out your own death. Oh God, who am I talking to? I don't know. But she took up his little traveling kit and she opened it and the first thing she saw on the book that he had a lot of names written that were supposed to be taken shortly. The first name she saw on the list was her name. Remember, death was not there. Death went away a little bit. When I hear good things, I want to pass it on. Some of us run with all the bad things and leave the good things buried. This is sobering. So when she saw her name, she decided, according to how Brother Joseph told the story, I knew it slightly differently. She got some white out. That's her, in her house. So she knew what she had. And you know white out, white out could take, um, erase your anything you want. She wiped out her name because death was going to take her. And she put her name to the bottom of the list that death had. So when death came back, she was looking, you know, acting as though she did nothing, but she only mind her own business. All the time she was in the business of death. And death started to speak to her before he opened his pouch and said, you know, you've been so kind to me. You treated me so well. And I had come really to take you today. Because you've been so kind to me, I shall not do it. I'm going to take the last person on the list. <laughs> you, you're following the things. Okay. After you've been so nice to me, I repeat. I would leave you for the last, not you today. And so when he went to the last name on the list, it was her name. We cannot trick or deceive God. 
we may trick or deceive others, but we cannot do that to God. The people did as you did, they laughed, most of them. And it's okay to laugh, but it's no laughing matter to leave this world, leaving all the riches behind. All the loved ones behind. All the company that influence you to do otherwise than to serve God. That ain't going to be no laughing matter. When you stand before God alone. So it is time to ask the Lord to help you. Make the right, wise decision to accept him. And to serve him for the rest of physical life. I'm going to ask you to bow your heads. Just to save you from destruction. We're going out in the open today in the will of the Lord. One of the young men who traveled with Pastor Williams. Age 35 he was at that time. I mean, he was such an asset to the ministry. He sang like nobody else could. But he got sick. And he said, he, the testimony is that he knew that God was not going to heal him. He arranged his funeral service. And what happened on the day at his funeral, there were those who stood in the gap for him. And one of the songs the choir sang then, I remember as though it was yesterday, funeral. I'll be standing in the gap for you. As I look at the young brother of Akili Latham yesterday, the Spirit of God, I believe, was saying to me, just go and pray for him. Pray for him in such a way that he would rise to the challenge and where his brother did not reach and what he didn't get to accomplish that he would be able to do it you're here today you have not yet surrendered to Jesus the spirit of God is saying do it now I hear somebody saying in my spirit don't scare anybody don't do that What I want to do is to snatch you as brand from the burning. Eternity is real. That's why we're going out in the open to share our testimony. That is why we open these doors and ask other ministers to open the doors of God's house. So that people can come in and surrender to Jesus. How many of you are here today? If any is, how many of you? No simi dimi. Just stand up where you are. Ask for an excuse and come right down to this altar. You're listening to us from your home. Might not be home, but you're hearing the message by means of radio. Praise FM. What a tremendous job God is using Praise FM to do. You're hearing... The voice of God speaking to your spirit. And you would resist no more. But you would come today. I ask you to come. We've bought television time and we've done it for years. To share the message. Are you listening today? We might be on the internet where we're live streaming. God is opening up avenues for us from this little room to be an evangelist bringing good news. Come. Come. These young men who've come from Barbados, they haven't come for a holiday. They've come to assist us in the proclamation of the gospel. I thank God for them. How many of you would respond to this call of God right now? Come in Jesus' name.
Come, young man. Come, young woman. Come, older one. Come. Come to Jesus. Time is running out. Time is running out. Come. Come. I heard one of the men in our country talking about another man who passed away recently. But the death of the righteous is the way that you would want to die. Let me die the death of the righteous. For the last time, is there anybody? Is there anybody who would like to come today? Congregation standing, please. Is there anybody? I'm hearing what is being played on the instrument. What are you going to be remembered for? Let's do it now. Just one verse. And you cannot say that I didn't make it clear. You cannot say the others didn't make it clear. The word come. See? Children. O older ones. M, middle age. E, everyone. Come. Just as the Holy Ghost is here to bring you conviction. Not condemnation. Conviction. So that you can commit your life to the Lord. Will you come? Is there somebody listening from elsewhere? You want to dial 456 1636. That number again 456 1636. Might be from overseas. You would need the area code, which is 784. Say, I've heard uh, the call and I am coming. Do it. Do it in Jesus' name. I come to you whose blood can cleanse each spot. O oh, Lamb of God, I come. Lamb of God, Lamb of God, Lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world, I come. We are out of time. We have to stop there for today. But I trust that the Word of God will have free course in your hearts. If we can be a further help to you, please get in touch with us and let us know. You can write to us at Direction, PO Box 443, St. Vincent, West Indies. You can also call us at 784-456-1636 or visit us online at streamsofpower.com. And on a Sunday morning, feel free to join us for worship at any of our Streams of Power locations, whether at Sans Souci, 9 a.m. on a Sunday morning, Kare at 8 a.m., Sion Hill at 7.30 a.m., or Paget Farm Beckway at 8.30 a.m. We'd like to extend a heartfelt thank you to those of you who continue to partner with us through your prayers and financial contributions. In this season when some are hoarding everything to themselves, be reminded that God still loves a cheerful giver. And as you continue to give into his work, may he honor his word as he has said, prove me now and see if I will not open up the windows of heaven to pour you out a blessing that you will not have room enough to receive. We look forward to hearing from you. So until next time, may God bless you richly.